What is going on today, guys? Welcome back to another episode of No, Don't Do That. So you may remember recently in an episode of WNN, my highly official news show, I suggest you watch it. I mentioned how Minimal Audio was showing some previews of something new that they had on the way. There was little to no detail about it. They just showed what appeared to be a granular synth and a dank sounding sample chop. Whoa, it has edit from the glitch mob happily using it on the front page of their website. What could go wrong? It's a subscription service. On their website, it says your new favorite synth. Yeah, they really thought people loved the subscription. You're wrong, minimal audio. I love this music. I don't love the subscription. Now don't get me wrong, it is their choice if they wanna go that route with their business, but we're gonna talk about that today and why people are upset and how it gets a bit deeper than that. So it appears to be a pretty dope synthesizer on the surface. It looks like a cross between Vital and Serum. They've merged basically everything together, a lot of synth and effect ideas all in one. So the last thing they released before this was Stream. Yeah, the stream. It honestly sounds like it's gonna be piss when you name it that. It's a subscription service similar to Splice, which was expanded to work for Current as well too, featuring presets and wavetables. But the bad news is Current is tied to this. So yes, you have to join the subscription plan in order to use Current, currently. The only upside to this is that it still works in your DAW for playback and any project that you have used it in the past after canceling it. So you won't have to resubscribe in order to finish that mix down on that track you worked on months ago. Thank you, Minimal Audio you're so generous. The synth itself has granular, spectral wavetables, an additive sub oscillator, a time stretching sampler. What seems to be going on here is they tried to hit two markets at once. The synth nerds who want complete control over a synthesizer as well as the people looking to just use presets. I'm guessing they were so busy working on this they didn't notice what happened to Avid when they tried to make Pro Tools sub only or when Waves Audio tried to make it sub only too. It is $15 a month or $10 a month if you pay for a whole year. There is a 30 day trial but it requires credit card information. As you may have guessed, people did not like this. So obviously everyone hates subscription services, but no one hates them more than music producers. We already have more of them available for more services than we could ever want. I think if a company did this five plus years ago, it probably wouldn't have been as poorly received. At this point, I think a lot of music producers are extremely sick of the subscription model. In their minds, it's probably like, I have subscriptions for non-production things. I need a subscription for some DAWs. I need a subscription for some plugins. Now I need one for just a synthesizer. On top of that, the payout from music music is at an all time low. The producers who aren't professionals or successful at what they do are quite often spending more money on their music tools than they are making from the music. A better way for them to have done this, well, first off would have been to not include a subscription at all. They should have just had an option to buy it or to make it rent to own. And if they want to have a subscription service, just have it for their piss service or whatever, which obviously would include current and access to all of their plugins. People will tolerate software subscription services and some people will actually use it if you still have the option to outright buy it. The fact of the matter is you can get pigments or phase plant for $100 when it's on sale sometimes, or you can get vital for free. $100 is less than what it would cost for a year of this subscription service. So I'm not quite sure how they thought this would work in their favor. The synthesizer seems good, but what is on the market is also really good too. These other synth companies provide free updates to their products. In fact, uh, Faceplant released one while I was recording this video even. While Vital does have paid options, you can still get your foot in the door for free. They would have come out much further ahead if instead they offered to be the affordable alternative to what is currently on the market. They would have gotten more sales, more positive feedback, more support, which would have led to a much more positive word of mouth, and I guarantee they actually would have made more money in the long run. Uh, this just in though, apparently they think their synth is worth $800. So there've been several threads just blowing them up, and in this KVR thread here, they did apologize about the pricing tweet, saying they did not mean that literally. Let's take a look at this KVR thread though while we're at it. There's definitely some gems in here. So here they are defending themselves a bit pretty rational so far it continues on and they turn themselves into victims a bit here i'm just going to read specific portions of it if you want to read the whole thing it'll be on screen i have to attend to a lot of stuff today but i leave it with this we just as an incredibly small and indie company built a product which competes or is greater than 50 million to 100 million dollar company products in my opinion it is extremely painful to wake up and read abuse here and even in my personal dms wishing for myself to starve and fail 
over a product which yesterday no one even owned. I wouldn't call a thread on a third party website about your product abuse. People are going to have opinions. People telling you to starve in your DMs is most likely abuse though. Keep in mind though, a lot of people go through this sort of thing. I get hate comments all the time. I like this response from somebody in the thread quite a bit here. Don't worry, I'm pretty sure voodoo is not a real thing. And I'm also pretty sure the ratio of messages wishing you to starve and die compared to the ones where people are simply expressing sincere disappointment in your execution of this launch strategy is rather heavily leaning towards the latter. Maybe focus your emotions toward these ones instead. So we actually haven't gotten into the biggest no-no yet here, but we're about to. So it seems that the content creators they sent out pre-release versions of this synthesizer to had no idea this would be a subscription only synth. Yeah, I'm not sure how they thought this would work. I actually checked my email and they also attempted to send me this product as well too. I got a press release kit and there was no mention of it being a subscription only synth. There was no mention of pricing either, which I don't know how people intended to review this when they had no idea what the price would be. I feel like that is something that heavily weighs into your review. How are you gonna release a review when you don't know the price of something? If it's gonna cost $5,000 and you gave it a 10 out of 10, but it's something that should be worth 100 or $200, you're gonna look like a fool. Several creators had content prepared for this product that ended up looking foolish because they had no idea it was subscription only until it came out. Now they have to take a bunch of flack for that. This is another big problem with content creators getting pre-release versions of plugins and preparing a review for the second that it comes out. You never know how different the marketing or software will be for the public versus what they send to you. Normally I'm not really a big fan of embargo release date content because it feels like an attempt to poison the well for lack of a better phrase essentially controlling the narrative before there's a chance for people to come in and say what they want to say about it. It allows companies to pick out content creators they think will have the most favorable opinion about their product and then let them speak about it first. But in this case here, it ended up exposing another flaw in the system. Anyways, a lot of these creators ended up adding in parts to the review or removing the reviews completely. I feel like they owe the creators that they sent this to more of an apology than they do to their consumers. It's their choice if they wanna charge on a monthly basis for a product, but they essentially used content creators as a shield for some of the criticism that they were gonna get. Whether it was completely intentional or accidental for them to not reveal this to creators is not completely clear. It does seem a bit intentional intentional from my perspective though, especially since I was also sent the press release kit and I got to see it firsthand. And they sent it to me several months in advance too, so it seems like they had time to tell people. It's a really important detail to leave out and it comes off quite a bit dishonest. Okay, as I was finishing up this video, Minimal Audio released their update and apology about this. Let's check it out. There were a lot of things that went wrong with the release of Current. Um, definitely poor communication from us to our creator community. Um, definitely poor communication to our customers. I think they need to address the poor communication to the content creators a bit more. Just saying it was poor communication is like not really getting into the details very much. You sent this out months ago and there was no price listed with it. I'm not sure how they thought that would play out, but it's just not a good look. It comes off as deceptive. You need to explain what happened there in my opinion. The sub plan thing, I, I could give a shit about. And honestly, just a poor decision on pricing um, with regards to what our intention with Current is. Um, so our goal with Current is really to build this constantly evolving, vastly improving synthesis ecosystem over time. And we wanted to make sure everybody experienced what our vision for that product is. Um, but obviously after everybody's feedback, we realized that it doesn't make sense when if you want to leave the system, you lose access to all that stuff after being on it for such a long period of time. I feel like what actually doesn't make sense is having it at a monthly price point when there are other options available that are not at a monthly price point that could easily replace it. All right, so here's what we're thinking, and this is what we would like to get your feedback on because we are going to relaunch Current. Um, obviously, everyone's in free trial right now. No one has spent a dollar on Current. By the time the free trial is finished, we will have a perpetual option of current up on the website. That's $200 one-time purchase without the cloud integration. Hooray, complaining works guys. Now the subscription, we're killing the subscription, no more subscription. We'll assign a value to every single thing in the stream, all of, all, all of the standalone effects plugins, everything. When you sign up for current, you will be signing up for an all access RTO program. And while you're on the RTO system, you so that's rent to own for everyone who doesn't know, you get unlimited access to everything inside of current. 
and all of the effects inside of current as standalone plugins as well. Just everything that we have to offer. Now, definitely the much better option here. Now, every year that you're on the RTO plan, you get every dollar you spend on the RT RTO plan back in the form of store credit to unlock any perpetual licenses of anything you're interested in keeping once you cancel the RTO option. Now, we, we think this is great because it still allows everybody to experience the kind of expansive vision we have for current. But as soon as that vision stops being valuable to you, you can take <clears throat> just what you want and leave with it. And it's great for us too, because it means that we need to continue to add so much value above and beyond that you want to stay on the RTO plan um, so you can continue to use everything. I think it's a win-win for everyone here. The only thing, I just, I just feel like they didn't quite address the content creator issue enough. You know, I don't know, they had months to let people know about the price point. I'm also surprised that none of the content creators, I mean, I'm assuming they didn't ask them about the price point uh, while getting emailed about it. And I feel like going forward, hopefully a lot of content creators have learned from this here that if you're getting sent something to do content on, you need to ask how much it's going to cost. That is important. You, you should not be presenting a product to your audience if you don't know how much it costs. So, so that's pretty much it. Subscription dead, RTO unlimited access is the future for this product. And that will allow us to keep the low barrier of entry we want, as well as as well as I hope, um, you know, allow everybody to experience the ecosystem and for people that are truly just completely uninterested in it and they just want to spend 200 bucks right now and get the synth, we'll have you covered as well. All right. So, you know, we want to continue to build this ecosystem. We think it's exciting. Obviously, we can't do it without you. So I want to apologize again for uh, just how poorly thought out this was. We have no problem with perpetual licenses, we like them too, um, but we're just so we were just so focused on the product and building this huge thing that we just lost kind of uh, a really a business vision that made sense in terms of the pricing and the products on the website and and the value to the user. Uh, it was kind of a moonshot moment where we just thought we'd just add so much value that. Uh, you know, everybody would love it. So we will fix it. And I hope that you guys will give us another chance. Thanks. Overall, I think it was a decent apology. But like I said, they need to address the content creator thing a bit more. I I don't know. I feel like both sides kind of f***ed up there. Anyways, that's all I had prepared for you today. If you press the like button on this video, that is one vote towards me not becoming subscription only on my YouTube channel. Press it. I could go subscription only any day now. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter to stay updated. I'll link it in the description. Subscribe if you're new here. I plan to shave my eyebrows if I hit 50k by the end of the year. And that's a promise. I shaved my head for 25k last year and I want to keep up the tradition of shaving things. I'll see you guys next time. Incorporated.